Hello class, this lecture will be focusing on the hypothalamus pituitary axis. This will be the first set of um, endocrine system pathway we'll be looking at. It's also a major system of regulation in the, homeo uh, in the regulation of homeostasis. So this is a, a way to regulate a lot of functions in our body, such as metabolism, growth, stress, reproduction, even milk production for breastfeeding, and then labor and delivery, and for breastfeeding, like I said, and then also water control and water retention. So you really want to understand this pathway because there's multiple hormones involved and multiple glands involved to regulate this pathway. So I started here to give you kind of a big overview on all that's going to be regulated by this system, but we'll slowly kind of understand how the system works. So if you go back a few slides, you will see that I started talking about the hypothalamus pituitary axis. So, and there's also a video for you to watch on all the different things that it um, regulates. This is also linked in your Canvas lesson learning activity page for week two. Okay, so um, when you look at the hypothalamus pituitary axis, you can see that it is involving, let me just add a new slide here and to show you. So it involves three, usually a set of three organs and there's multiple then hormones involved. So if we go back to how we think about the endocrine system, you have gland one or tissue one, and in this case is the hypothalamus. Okay, and then the second part of the axis of control is the anterior pituitary. So that makes up the hypothalamus pituitary, and then there'll be another gland. And this could be multiple things. Okay, so this I'll leave blank. But then there is an axis of control where the hypothalamus connected to the brain is processing information that comes in, right? So you're going to have a lot of sensory information integration, emotions, fear, um, this kid is going through a growth spurt, all that is coming from the brain. And that information is integrated into part of the brain, the hypothalamus. So all that information is coming to the hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus becomes the master controller, the command center. Well, that then will dish out the different commands. So it will then communicate to the next organ, telling it what to do. It, it could stimulate it. So we use a plus signal. To the next, set, next middle gl uh, gland, which is the pituitary gland. Then that will then send out information to the working gland, okay? The working gland is the last gland. So how do you communicate from one, one gland to another? So they, obviously they can't talk. So there has to be some kind of chemical or electrical or some kind of communication. So in this case, it is true that what we what the hypothalamus do to communicate is it's going to send out some little messages into the blood. In the blood, then these messages will come and communicate to the next gland. So these messages are hormones, and we'll just abbreviate. They usually from the hypothalamus is some kind of releasing hormone. Okay. So it's some kind of hormone and they come to the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland is going to have to come communicate to the working gland and the same thing again hormone is then released okay and when that hormone is released then the working gland will send the hormone again finally creating the response at the end so this is a, a, a how what we call the hypothalamus pituitary axis okay so you only kind of use an analogy there's multiple analogy just think of the brain as your major processing center and in the hypothalamus i like to think of it as like the master controller or the ceo okay so it's going to send out command 
Well, then, you know, it's quite busy. It's up in the brain here. Then it's going to send up messages then to the pituitary gland, which is, I consider, the middle manager. So this will be your manager. And then finally, it's going to send it to the workers. So these will be the workers of the gland. So then that will produce the response. So for example, if Apple CEO says I want more iPhones, then the CEO will send a message that says more iPhone, more iPhone. Then the multiple managers over the world then is going to tell their workers that we need more iPhones, more iPhones. So then they're going to send out more iPhones. Okay, so this, there's a chain of command. So if the CEO tells the manager to do something, the manager has to do it. And the manager tells the worker to do it, the workers have to do it. So that's part of the hypothalamus pituitary access. This is a little bit different than the other system we will talk about is a hypothalamus, which also is functioning the same way here, but it's going to work through the posterior pituitary or the neural hypophysis a neuronal tissue, posterior, posterior hypophysis, and this control is not through hormone, but more of a neuronal control. And then that neuronal control, then uh, hormone is then released. So this we will not talk about as uh, much in this unit. It will be talked about later on, but this will be of a neuronal control and it's, it's not the hypothalamus pituitary axis. When we talk about the axis, it's referring to this side. So you can look at here, you can see this is all the hypothalamus pituitary axis, and here we have the neural hypophysis, and this is controlled via the neurons. So there's a lot going on here. And you don't, I don't expect you to memorize it at all at this point. Um, we'll do slowly do three in this unit and work our way through other ones. But I do want you to understand the hypothalamus, um, what it does, and then the adenohypophysis, and then the uh, neural hypothesis. And you can go back and read information on, on what the hypothalamus actually does. Here, coloring green, green information. Okay. And then like, thinking about all the kind of control going on here. And then looking at the relationship again here with this explanation. And I did want you to spend some time to think about the pituitary gland or hypothesis. So hypophysis or hypothesis means pituitary gland. And I want you to take a look at that and think about the histology and then do a little practice on identifying the histology for that tissue. So this is a general overview of the hypothalamus pituitary axis. Think about the questions a little bit. Here are some questions for you to think about and then some practice questions for you to think about in terms of understanding the hypothalamus pituitary axis.